So Matt's in his COVID studio next door. I'm in my COVID studio here. Susie's in her COVID saloon bar. <laughs> uh, I just, am. Okay. And it's another Christmas confession. Uh, just three this week. So one of these will get the smart speaker. In time for Christmas? What do you think? Mm. So it'd be unlikely, I would say. New Year prize. Yeah, the New Year prize, yes. To arrive sometime next year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we promise that. Okay, so today's tale <clears throat> comes from Mags. Thank you, Mags. Father Simon and the Confessional Collective. I think this confession might make you smile. Going back a few years, in early spring, my niece, Nancy, was opening a shop. The shop she had bought still had some old stock left in it from the previous owners. And being the nice sort of people that we are, we offered to help her sort it and clean it out, ready for her to move in her own stock. This is what families are for. We spent the morning cleaning and dusting and hoovering, and finally, during a tea break, we decided to open the boxes that were left over. Inside, we found around 400 Father Christmas gnomes. Now there's a lovely thing to discover. Nancy asked if my husband as he had a van, could take them to the skip. 400 Father Christmas gnomes were no good to her, or anyone else, frankly. Let me just check that. Matt, would you like... I could to... probably shift a couple of them. I mean, yeah. He says you could put them in the bar. That would be... Um... Yeah, not 400, though. No, that's true. Anyway, so uh, they were no good for anybody. Also, they were more than just a little creepy, says Mags. Mm. Some looked shifty. Others looked as though they were as mad as hell. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Very festive. Right. <laughs> anyway, as we left, <clears throat> we collected the Father Christmas gnomes together, popped them in the van. It had been a long day, so we decided not to take them to the skip on the way home. It was late, and we needed to get home and start dinner. So we took them home with us and decided to put them in the garage. It looked like an army, Father Simon. The terracotta warriors dressed for Christmas, <laughs> all in one garage. Okay. But wearing gnomic waistcoats and smoking Gandalf pipes. Father Simon, the gnomes never made it to the skip. They stayed in the garage, but this is not my confession. For that, we need to fast forward to Christmas Eve later that year. Terry and I had a few too many sherries after going to the village <laughs> Christmas carol concert. Because that's really the true spirit of Christmas, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. I think. <laughs> Festive sherry or seven. Of course. Around about 11.30... Now, the next sentence never makes sense. Okay. At 11.30pm, we had a bright idea. <laughs> that has never <laughs> No, no you didn't. Ever. No. If you've had an idea at half past 11 at night, it's always going to be regretted the following morning. <laughs> Sleep on it. Exactly. Terry made a mix of sand and cement, put it in a bucket, and off we went. All around the village where we live... We went around stealth-like, cementing Christmas gnomes wherever we felt we could. <laughs> oh, no. We, if we found an area of the village that needed some Christmas cheer, we added a gnome. And that was pretty much everywhere, to be perfectly okay. honest. Grim old place. We cemented gnomes to doorsteps, walls, curbs. We had a good giggle whilst we were doing this. Gnomes were poking out from bins, standing atop post boxes, on top of cars. Gnomes were lurking in bushes. You get the idea. Also, we noticed that when we put them in threes and fours, they looked like boy bands about to sing. <laughs> <laughs> we left four gnomic take that's, a boy zone. The scariest ones, obviously, we put in our E17. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> of course. Stay another day. Yeah. <laughs> what fun we had. We felt like Santa himself. After we had deposited the 400th Father Christmas gnome in his new home, we headed back exhausted and happy and fell straight asleep. Christmas morning, when we woke up from our sherry-induced slumber, memories of the night before came flooding back and we remembered what we'd done. The village was filled with little festive people. Lucky for us, everyone seemed to find it a good laugh. One of the gnomes had been kidnapped and a ransom note was left on the lamppost. Another sign went up, don't feed the gnomes. Two of the gnomes went missing, left farewell notes saying they'd gone in search of other smaller gnomes. Two of them had eloped and said they were planning to get married and have little people. This appeared to be anatomically impossible. <laughs> we checked. <laughs> but they were gnomes, so I wasn't going to argue. There was a good feeling, a good festive feeling around the village. But, and I don't know 
if because we can't remember, probably because of the sherry, we don't know if we ever confessed. It's still a village mystery. We've moved away now to higher and better things, but we do have some contacts back in the village. So if you could just let the villagers know that it was Terry and I who brought the little people to our village. Have a good Christmas. Stay safe. You'll notice that I've removed the name of the village. Yes. In case, in fact, the opposite is the case. And very nice fade. Very, very yeah, nice fade. Phrase move. And actually, oh, the opposite. And if ever, if they knew where Mags and Terry lived, then they'd be straight up there saying, yeah. you ruined our drive. Look at our post box now. Where we had to prize the Father Christmas gnome from the top. Look at the paint that got scratched. Anyway, Sister Susie from the pub. Uh, do you know what? I think this is great. It really, really made me laugh. And okay, maybe it was something that you, you maybe shouldn't have done, but it brought a lot of cheer and a lot of laughs to the village. So I'm sure they were all very grateful. So I, in a fist in the festive spirit yes. I'm going to forgive brother from another gutter I mean surely nothing says Christmas like having four Christmas gnomes concreted to your doorstep <laughs> I know that's what I, I would love that definitely <laughs> it feels like the rest of the village loved it as well you know leaving the little notes that kind of thing and the ones that didn't you know they had a Christmas gnome there all the time so I'm going to forgive that's a very nice thing the text please for the people's vote 61054 first word is Simon forgiven or not entirely down to you Twelve minutes past six, merely moments ago, uh, we had uh, the first of this week's festive confessions, the Christmas confessions. Mags and Terry went around their village after a few too many sherries, uh, cementing 400 Father Christmas gnomes to whatever they could find. Some of them arranged like Take That, some of them, more terrifyingly, <laughs> arranged like E17. Mm. Uh, anyway, the people's verdict is in. Here it is. Yes, everyone forgives, basically. John Boyce has forgiven, but did nobody notice the concrete mix? It must have taken a lot of concrete. Uh, Ash from Harrogate says, forgiven. If that happened nowadays, it would be classed as an art installation and would have garnered the village lots of tourist interest. And finally, Ray says, forgiven. There's no business like gnome business, like no business. Business, I know. Who was the, who's the second one from? That was from uh, Ash from Harrogate. Uh, Ash managed to sort of complain about the state of the world <laughs> whilst also <laughs> commenting on our Christmas confession. Mm. It might be the best of the week. We'll have to wait and find out. It's probably too late for you to send in a Christmas confession probably. because they're kind of nailed down and sorted. And I think you're going to enjoy tomorrow's and Wednesday's particularly. So uh, we'll take your confessions though at any time. Confessions at greatest it's radio.co.uk. Oh, anyway, sorry. here comes. Uh, tonight's tale. Uh, Susie's speaking to us live from the pub. How's, I am. Uh, are you open today? Uh, we are open. Got some mulled cider on the go. Well, I haven't, but the <laughs> pub has. Obviously, so. well done. Yeah, mulled cider would be quite useful, <laughs> actually. Uh, Matthew's next door in his secure studio. <laughs> uh, and I'm in mine. So here we go with um, today's festive tale. And I think... Although it's quite shocking, I think some most people will feel as though they've come quite close to doing something. Similar. Oh, really? Oh, good. It comes from Saz. Thank you, Saz. Saz. S A Z. What's wrong okay. with that? Nothing. No. Saz. Oh, I added an extra Z. <laughs> I feel as though you've judged already <laughs> just based on the fact that someone is called Saz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mister D- <laughs> Mister Dursley next door. Father Simon and the Christmas Collective. This happened, says Saz, around 30 years ago, and both parties involved in my sinful tale are long since deceased. So there is little risk of offending anyone. I don't know about that. But I've changed the names anyway. My mother, who I'll call Joan, is very elderly and pretty confused a lot of the time, but pottered through her life contentedly, her evening glass of gin helping somewhat in this respect. As indeed it does for all of us. It does, doesn't Or it? a mulled cider, really maybe, yes. this time of year. <laughs> maybe that's why she was confused. But anyway, Mum had an old friend who I'll call Alice, who was also my godmother. In truth, my mum didn't like Alice. <laughs> <laughs> and used to make wild gestures at us whenever Alice rang and we picked, <laughs> picked up the phone, knowing that she would be in for a good hour of moans and complaints. We got quite good at her sign language and inventing creative excuses as to why Mum wasn't available for a chat. It's my belief that all families are like this. We all have an Alice. And in the day before caller ID, (laughs) you could be stuck for hours. 
with assorted dreadful members of your family and friends. <laughs> Happy Christmas. Yes. Wow. Anyway, leading up to what turned out to be my mother's final Christmas, I had bought cards to send to everyone on her usual list of friends, including Alice. I duly addressed and stamped all the envelopes, and all I had to do was to put the pile of cards in front of her with a pen and ask her to write Joan in each one. All went swimmingly. Cards were signed, posted in time for Christmas, with a few spares left over. Sadly, Mum died the following February, and many of her friends attended the funeral. Then, almost a year later, a Christmas card arrived for Mum from Alice. And the horrified realisation dawned that I had omitted to tell her oh, of no. my mother's demise. This was unforgivable. She was one of my mum's oldest friends and my godmother to boot, even if we had spent many years trying to avoid any conversation with her at all, <laughs> on account of her moaning. So I did what every caring, <laughs> caring goddaughter should do in this situation. I found one of the leftover signed cards from the previous year oh, no. and posted that to Alice. Literally a Christmas card from beyond the grave. Not that oh. she knew that at the time. <laughs> okay. So she thought she got a Christmas card from my mum as right. normal. Yeah. I then wrote to her the following February with the sad news that mum had passed away, omitting to mention that this had actually happened a year ago and praying that she really, really couldn't manage to come to the funeral as we lived quite a long way away. Anyway... <laughs> Fortune smiled on me. Like... <laughs> Fortune smiled on me because... I, I duly received a sweet, if rather belated, letter of condolence. Though the fact that it was a belated letter of condolence was clearly my fault yeah. and yeah. not hers. Alice has long since departed from this world and, depending on what you believe, very possibly now knows the truth. <laughs> but, but my conscience... <laughs> Still weighs heavy on me, even though it's given many people a horrified giggle over the intervening years. I know that certain members of your very collective advocate lying to their children, and I'm rather hoping that lying to one's godmother might be viewed very in the same good. lenient light. Very good. Over to you. <laughs> Says Saz. Anyway, you know, I suspect that, there, that we've all got tales a little bit like this when you're going through the Christmas card list and you realise quite how many on your Christmas card list are no longer with us. Uh, and then it's easy to make mistakes and not invite everybody anyway. So I think Saz has been very creative, but let's check in with the voice of moral authority. The woman with a moral compass on the show. That's Sister Susie from the pub. Well, Saz, uh, I, I just can't get over this one. What well, I wanted to know what happened if she tried to call. What would you have done if she'd have phoned up well, to speak to her during that the couple of months where she thought she was still alive? <laughs> Saz, would, Saz would have put on a voice, I think. <laughs> But I think, oh, she didn't want to come to the funeral anyway, so maybe she wasn't that good a friend. Yeah. So I don't want to forgive Sam. Oh, what? Well, everyone's been trying to avoid her for a yeah. long time. Didn't want to come, did she? No, no. Yeah. Didn't want to come. Deserved everything she got. Brother from another guy. Um, uh, yeah, dreadful members of the family. You know what I'm taking from this? I'm taking don't moan on the phone. Don't moan on the phone or else, you know, you'll miss out. That's the, very much the Christmas message that I think is, is contained right? within this confession. Definitely, that's the little moral that I'm going to be sermonising on over the turkey. So, uh, yes, uh, definitely forgiven. Right, so the, the true meaning of Christmas is don't moan on the phone. Don't moan on the phone. There you go. <laughs> so He's the three right. Wise, wow. The three wise men, the, the yes. gold, frankincense, gold, frankincense and, the and don't don't go uh, moaning don't on moan the phone, moan. Balthazar. Okay, yeah. so we would like uh, your verdict, please. The people's verdict. Do you forgive Saz, yes or no? On the text 61054, start your message with Simon, or you can email simon at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Um, we continue in a moment. The people's verdict, though, on tonight's confession, which came from Saz, and the story of how she signed, she sent off a Christmas card signed by her dead mother to the friend she'd forgotten to invite to the funeral. And, I mean, that's it in a sentence, pretty much. People's verdict is in. What do they yes, say? Yes, so Rachel says, Forgiven, we have a phone-moaning relative whose calls usually generate that internationally recognised silent cutthroat gesture accompanied by rolling eyes signalling, No, I can't speak. I'm dead. Yes. Happy Christmas, Saz. Uh, Graham from Croydon <laughs> says, Not forgiven. Honesty is always the best policy. If they hadn't spoken, not even a phone call between February and December, then they clearly weren't that good friends anyway. So why bother lying? And finally, Rebecca in Berkshire says, 
says, not forgiven at all. If my hypothetical future daughter neglected to tell a close friend of my passing, rest assured, once my friend joined me, the daughter would be haunted forever. I think it's I think some complicated wow. theology in yes, there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. If you take part, send your confessions. We've got another festive confession for you tomorrow. More smart smart speakers to give away uh, next year, of course. Uh, confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. It's Christmas. It is, and here comes the last of our Christmas confessions. It comes from Nemo. Uh, so it's just three uh, Christmas confessions this week, but there is a smart speaker to give away, so we'll have to sit in verdict in the next hour, I think, as to which our favourite is. Uh, when you've heard this, the people's verdict, please. As expected, 61054. First word is Simon. Nemo's tale begins. Father Simon, I was enduring a forced trip to a large but now defunct toy emporium to shop for my child one festive season when I noticed a product on the shelf. It was a bag of 50 colourful small plastic Santa hats which were suitable to put on the heads of miniature figures manufactured in Denmark. <laughs> right. <laughs> Part of a range of generic variously coloured interlocking toy plastic bricks. <laughs> okay, I wonder what that could uh, be. Yeah, I get yeah. it. Other generic variously <laughs> coloured interlocking toy plastic yeah. bricks are available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This would hold little interest to people of a sound mind, but in an instant I saw the opportunity for harmless hilarity, so I added them to my trolley. Several days later... What certificate have we got on this one, by the way, Sister Susie? <laughs> PG? Mm, yeah, yeah, I think so. PG. Okay. Don't try this at Let's home. Let's be safe. Several Definitely days later, <laughs> at my local pub during the first week of December, I met with a friend, let's call him Lionel, who is blessed with a similarly warped imagination and sense of humour as mine, and after a few pints of thinking juice had been consumed, we, we concocted a cunning plan. The next week, Lionel and I went fishing at a nearby lake stocked plentifully with many different types of fish. We spent a while catching the slippery, floppy, fin-flapping fishes. I don't think <laughs> Nemo is a regular fisherman. <laughs> Instead of catching and releasing... We caught them, dried off the tops of their heads, smeared on some golden syrup, and then added a colourful plastic Santa hat <laughs> right. to, to each, <laughs> to each fish. Oh. We then released them back into the water. Okay. All in all, we syruped Santa hats to 20, 27 fish. Mm -hmm. And off they swam. Yeah. <laughs> There was a reason for our endeavours, and that was the fact that there was a fishing tournament in the lake later that day. Now, the afternoon was sunny and crisp, and the tournament started at 1pm sharp with the soft toot of the ref's whistle. And the hundred or so combating anglers cast their lines into the water. You can cut the tension with a knife. Yeah. After about 30 minutes, fish began to appear on the ends of lines, but they were just ordinary fish without anything to keep them warm. <laughs> Presumably the water, this is what we thought, presumably the water had washed the syrup and the hats away. Oh, Fair yes. Enough. Another 45 mm -hmm. minutes passed and Lionel and, I, Lionel and I were about to give up hope when we heard in the distance a cry of, What in the world? <laughs> <laughs> this was followed by four more Santa fish being caught within an hour. Wow. Causing general confusion and scattered uproarious laughter. We were enjoying our rewards very much indeed when we noticed one angler standing up in his boat, holding a Santa fish and laughing like a drain. He'd obviously never seen a funnier fish in his life and was in hysterics <laughs> over it. He eventually laughed so hard, he doubled over, forgot his circumstances, oh, lost God. his balance and oh. fell out of the boat. <gasps> fell out of oh, the boat? No. This being December, oh, dear. it's very cold. Oh. Of course, I'm happy to report he managed to drag himself back into his boat after a little struggle. Uh, but unfortunately, he did drop his very expensive fishing rod and reel into the lake where it immediately sank to the bottom, never to be retrieved. Oh, man. The Santa fish also made a clean getaway, adding insult to injury to the poor, soaked fisherman. Most of the hats had, of course, been washed away, but the few to make it through sure made an impact. Lionel, Lionel and I, can't say Lionel no. and I, <laughs> were extremely satisfied and a little smug with our efforts. And to this day, I can't eat fish and chips without thinking <laughs> what my cod would look like with a little Santa hat on its head. Mm. 
I seek forgiveness for our fishy shenanigans and would like to apologise to the fisherman who laughed so hard that he fell out of his boat and lost his costly gear and to the tournament organisers for turning the event into a very funny shambles. Uh, because that's what it was, really. Anyway, Nemo, I'm not... I'm, I'm really not sure about this as a kind of a... I mean, I can, I can see it as a cartoon, I can see it as a Pixar movie, but this is real life. Let's see what Sister Susie, the voice of responsibility from the pub, makes of that. Well, Nemo, and, and you know, you might be having a laugh and a joke, but you didn't apologise to the fish, which I think was should have been what? your first apology. We're apologising to fish now. Goodness well, yeah, me. You, this is, We're all one. They might not have consented. The world. So true, so true. <laughs> to the Santa hats. <laughs> so I, I can't forgive you because I do think it was a bit mean to the fish. Think of the fish. Won't someone please think Christmas. of the fish? <laughs> yes, it's that time of year where we need to think of... Men and women and fish. <laughs> yes. Uh, brother from a nutter gu- uh, from a brother from an utter gutter. An utter gutter, an utter, yes. The utter, utter gutter. gutter. <laughs> the utter gutter. Um, uh, I mean, nothing says Christmas quite like uh, catching a haddock with a Santa hat on. That's what I thought. It really captures the spirit. And golden of, syrup. And golden syrup on, on top there as well. Mm. If you're going to be in a boat in the middle of December uh, and and it's cold and it tips over, then the, 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 that's what's coming to you, really. Uh, so should have should have should have known your circumstances. And as for dropping your rod in if only there was some way of you know fishing it out in a fishing competition <laughs> yes. with your nets and your rods so uh, nothing to forgive because it's christmas everyone okay, and won't so someone you... think of the fish let's think of the fish and apologize to the fish and then we'd all get on so much better mm. however the people's verdict is expected now do you forgive nemo yes or no on the text 61054 first word is simon well, we had a fishy confession from Nemo, uh, which involved uh, little Santa hats and 27 fish in a fishing competition and a fisherman falling uh, into the lake and losing his equipment. Uh, anyway, it was a shocking tale and the people's verdict is in. Here it is, yes. nicely pruned by So, Matthew. Louise says, not forgiven. Using golden syrup to attach Santa hats sounds fishy to me. Uh, Cannon family say, not forgiven. Really? Had Nemo just been all day drinking, poor fish, yes. and he wasted <laughs> golden syrup. And uh, Hannah and Jim from Worcester, uh, who told us earlier that they'd had three beers, they say, we're now six beers in, so totally <laughs> forgiven. Who doesn't want to see festive Santa fish? Try saying festive Santa fish after six beers. Yes, I would imagine that's pretty much it. Don't forget, keep your confessions coming in. Uh, we'll uh, have a fantastic batch for you starting in the new year uh, when drive time returns. Are we on the 4th? Is that when we're back? I think something like that. I'm just turning to yeah. Sister Susie. Uh, Sister she's, Susie she's knows. in charge, but she's been on the uh, mulled <laughs> cider already, <laughs> I suspect. I think that's it. Anyway, we have to decide who gets our final smart speaker oh, yes. uh, of the year. Probably won't arrive in time for Christmas. Uh, so, which is our favourite? So, Monday's confession was from Mags, who went with Terry round the village after a few too many sherries, oh, yeah. cementing 400 yes. Father Christmas gnomes. Gnomes, yeah. Um, and assembled them in various boy band groups. Mm-hmm. The scariest ones went into E17, obviously. <laughs> Obvs. Next up was Sazzy's confession, the tale about sending a Christmas card signed by her dead mother to the friend she'd forgotten <laughs> to invite to the funeral. It, I mean, it, it's funnier than it sounds, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, to uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, you just had our final confession of the week about Nemo and his Santa hats, fishermen falling in the lake. I'm going to go for... I think I'm going to go for Sazzy's confession from yesterday about the Christmas card, just because I think we've all been very close to a similar kind of thing. Mm. Uh, Sister Susie, what do you think? It, you know, it's a tough one this week. Um, I Well, I'm not going to give it to Fishy Nemo because I think that was just mean, but the gnomes did make me laugh and Sazzy's was so shocking. It's between those two. Maybe Saz, maybe Saz tips it for me okay so so i'm gonna go for mags and the gnomes that's the one i'm so but i've already lost haven't i yes because you two have yet I again mean, mags and the gnomes was a good one but i think saz is going to sneak it on the smart speaker uh, so saz thank you very much indeed uh i mean that's obviously not your name so i've got no, no. idea who you are no or where you live so we maybe we could <laughs> we can just keep the speaker okay <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm a present down, so actually that's that's <laughs> All right. Good. All right. How's that works? Uh, your confessions for next year. Confessions at greatest hits radio.com.